Walking alone, the streets are empty The only thing I can see is my own silhouette I'm getting stronger, step by step Hi, welcome back to my class in Abstract Algebra. For today, we will take up homomorphism. A homomorphism is a mapping or a function from one group to another group. And these two groups may have the same binary operations or different binary operations. And the two non-empty sets of the two groups may be the same or different non-empty sets. We now formally define homomorphism. A homomorphism from group H, because H is a group, it consists of non-empty set, which is also denoted by capital H, and a binary operation. A homomorphism from group H to group G, because G is also a group, it consists also of a non-empty set, which is also denoted by capital G, and a binary operation. Again, a homomorphism from group H to group G is a mapping or a function denoted by F. F is a mapping or a function from set H to set G such that for every A, B elements of the first set H, this property is satisfied f of a, b is equal to f of a multiplied by f of b. In this definition, the binary operation on h is taken to be the multiplication operation as indicated by this juxtaposition notation. So the operation on h, which is a group, is multiplication. And at the right-hand side of this equation, f of a multiplied by f of b is indicates an operation multiplication which is the operation on the second group G with non-empty set G. If this satisfied, if this equation is satisfied, then we conclude that F is a homomorphism from H to G. And to show that a given function from one group to another group is a homomorphism, Simply verify this equation or this condition for any two elements of the first set H or the first group H. We now take an example.
Let H, H is the first group, and in this example, H is the set of integers, the negative integers, the zero integer, and the positive integer. And the binary operation on C is addition. Hence, the set of integers together with the binary operation addition is a group and denoted, and it's denoted by H. The first group in the definition of homomorphism. And the second group, G, in the definition of homomorphism in this example is the finite set with elements negative 1 and positive 1. And the operation on G is the operation multiplication. In the first group, H, the set of integers, the identity element is 0. And the operation, as I said, is addition. In the second group, G, the binary operation is multiplication. And we know that the identity element for multiplication is 1. And you can verify that G is a group. The identity element is 1. And the inverse of 1 is itself. And the inverse of negative 1 is also itself. Now we will verify that this mapping from H to G defined by this is a homomorphism. By this mapping from H to G, the value of X element of H, which is equal to the set of integer, therefore X is an integer, the value of X element of C under the mapping F or function F is defined by this. The value of F of X is equal to 1 if X, the integer, is an even integer. And the value of F of X, the value of the function F, For the given value of x is negative 1 if x is an odd integer. 0 is considered an even integer. And to verify that this function mapping from h to g is a homomorphism, we must show that this property is satisfied. But in this example, the operation in h is addition and the operation in g is multiplication. Thus, for, the, for this property of homomorphism, we, should, we must show that f of a plus b, because the operation in z is addition, is equal to f of a multiplied by f of b, because the operation in g is multiplication. And because the value of the function f or the mapping f depends on whether x is even or odd, we should consider four cases, in which the first case, the elements A and B of H, in this case the set of integers, are both even numbers, and the elements A and, A and B of H, in our example is the set of integers, are both odd integers, and case 3 we take A as an odd integer, and B as even integer, and in the last case we take A as even integer, and B as an odd integer. To show that the mapping F from the set of integers C to the given set G, which consists of two elements, negative 1 and positive 1, is a homomorphism. We must show that this condition of homomorphism in the definition of homomorphism is satisfied for every A, B elements of the first set C, the set of integers. F of A plus B must be equal to F of A multiplied by F of B. At the left hand side, we use the operation addition because the operation given in the first group, C is addition. And in, at the right hand side of this equation, we use the operation multiplication because the set G with elements negative 1 and 1 is a group under multiplication. And as I said earlier, because the value of the function mapping f at a given element of c depends on whether that element of c is even or odd, we consider four cases. And we start with the first case where a and b are integers, elements of c, and both are even integers.
Case 1, we let A and B be any two elements of C. So, A and B are both integers. And we add this condition, A and B are even integers. Which means that each uh, A and B are both divisible by 2. Or A and B can be expressed as multiple of 2. 2 times a real number. And if you have A and B even numbers and you take the sum of two even numbers, the sum is again an even number. And we denote the sum of A plus B as C, and therefore C is an even number. Then, if we denote a plus b, the sum a plus b as c, then c is even. Example, 2 and 4. 2 and 4 are even numbers. If you add these two even numbers, 2 plus 4, the sum is 6. And the sum 6 is again an even number. We now verify this equation. We start from the left-hand side. We find the value of the mapping f at a plus b. f of a plus b is equal to f of c because we let the sum a plus b be equal to c. And because c is an even number from our given earlier, the, the value of the function f is equal to positive 1 if the element of c the set of integers is even. And because C is an even number, the value of F of C is equal to 1. We also find the value of the Right hand side of this equation, f of a multiplied by f of b. Because a is an even number, the value of the function f given earlier is equal to 1 if the element a is an even number and the value of the function f is equal to negative 1 if the real number a is an odd number. But here, in case 1a is an even number, hence the value of the function f at a is equal to 1. Similarly, b is an even number. We let b be an even number, be an even integer, and the value of the function f at an even number is also equal to one and one multiplied by one is equal to one. Thus, you can see f of a b is one is equal to f of a multiplied by f of b one. And the property of homomorphism in the definition of homomorphism is satisfied for case 1 where a and b are integers and both integers are even number. We now consider case 2 where a and b are integers, elements of the first set in the mapping, and a and b are both odd numbers. Again, for case 2, we let A and B be any two integers with additional condition that A and B are odd integers. 
That means if you divide an adding teacher by 2, there is always a remainder of 1. Or an adding teacher is not exactly divisible by 2. Then the sum a plus b is we denote by c. Now if a and b are odd numbers, example 3 and 5, 3 and 5 are odd numbers. If you add 3 plus 5, the sum is 8 and the sum is an even number. And that is true in general. If A and B are odd numbers, the sum of two odd numbers is even number. Thus, if we denote C as the sum of A plus B, C is an even number. And A and B are odd numbers. And for case 2, we verify again this condition of homomorphism. We must show that f of a and b, f of a plus b, where a and b now are odd numbers, is equal to f of a multiplied by f of b, where a and b are odd numbers. And we start from the left-hand side. f of a plus b is equal to f of c because we denote the sum of a and b, a plus b by c. And because the sum a plus b, which is equal to c, is an even integer, the value of the function f at c, if c is an even number, is an even integer, is 1, as defined earlier in the given, the function f has a value of 1 if the value of x is even and the value of the function f is negative 1 at x if x is odd number. And c here is even number, so the value of the function f at c is equal to 1. And we also find the value of the right hand side of this equation f of a multiplied by f of b f of a is uh, a here is an odd number and the function f is defined to have value of 1 if the integer x is even number and the value of the function at the given integer is negative 1 if the integer is odd number. Since a here is negative, uh, sorry, since a here is an odd integer, the value of the function f of a is equal to negative 1. Similarly, because we take b as an odd integer, the value of the function f defined earlier at an odd integer b is negative 1. And negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 is equal to positive 1. Again, we have shown that f of a plus b, which is 1, is equal to f of a times f of b, which is also equal to 1. And we have shown that this condition of homomorphism is satisfied by this mapping from Z to G for case 2 where the two elements A and B of C are odd integers. We now continue with case 3 and case 4. We now consider case 3 where A is even integer and b is an odd integer. For case 3, we let 
A and B, we take any two integers, elements of C, the set of integers. But A is even integer and B is an odd integer. And we get the sum of these two integers. If A is even and B is odd, the sum is an odd integer. And we denote the sum of A and B with C. Example, if A is 2 and B is 5, 2 is 7 and 5 is odd, and you add these two integers, 2 plus 5 is 7, and 7 is an odd. In general, if A, if you add an even integer and an odd integer, the sum is an odd integer. And we denote the sum of A and B as C. Again, A plus B, we denote by C, and C is an odd integer. And we find the value of the function F at A plus B, and F of A plus B is equal to F of C, because C is equal to A plus B. And because C is an odd integer, the value of the function F at an odd integer is negative 1, as defined earlier. And this is the left-hand side of the equation that must be satisfied for the given mapping to be a homomorphism and we also find the value of the right hand side of the equation that must be satisfied for the given mapping to be a homomorphism that is at the right hand side we find f of a multiplied by f of b and we use multiplication because the operation given on the non-empty step tree consisting of negative 1 and 1 is multiplication The right hand side of the equation that must be satisfied for the function to be a homomorphism is f of a multiplied by f of b. Because a is an even number, sorry, even integer, the value of the function at even integer a is equal to positive 1. Multiply by the value of f of b. Because b, we take b as, a, as an odd integer, the value of the function f of b at an odd integer is negative 1. And 1 multiplied by negative 1 is equal to negative 1. Thus, we can see that f of a plus b, which is equal to negative 1, is equal to the value of f of a multiplied by f of b, which is also equal to negative 1. Thus, the property of a homomorphism is satisfied in the definition of homomorphism. Finally, we take the two integers a and b, but this time for case 4, we let a be an odd integer and we let b be an even integer. For the last case, we take, again, any two integers element of, elements of set C, but for the last case, for we let A be an odd integer, and B we let as an even integer. And again, if you add an odd integer and an even integer, the sum is an odd integer, and we let the sum of 
these two integers with A, an odd integer, and B, an even integer, as C. And C is an odd integer. Again, we verified the property of a, of a homomorphism in the definition of homomorphism. We first find the value of f of A plus B. f of a plus b is equal to f of c because c is equal to a plus b. And because c is an odd integer, the value of the function f at an odd integer, c is equal to negative 1. And we find the product f of a multiplied by f of b. The value of f of a at a, and because a is an odd integer, the value of f of, of the function f at an odd integer a is negative 1. And because b is an even integer, the value of the function f at an even integer b is positive 1. And negative 1 multiplied by positive 1 is equal to negative 1. And as you can see, f of a plus b equals negative 1 is equal to f of a multiplied by f of b, which is also equal to negative 1. Thus, the property or condition for the given function to be a homomorphism is satisfied. Because we have shown that f of a plus b is equal to f of a multiplied by f of b for any two integers a, b elements of the set of integers z, we therefore conclude that the mapping or function from set z to set g is a homomorphism. Before we take another example of homomorphism, we define kernel of homomorphism. We let the mapping from set H to set G, the asynchrony group H with a binary operation, and another group G with another binary operation. And the kernel of this um, homomorphism denoted by Kerr F is defined as follows. The kernel of homomorphism F is a set consisting of those elements X of H such that the value of the function F, the value of the mapping F or function F at X is equal to E, where E here is the identity element of the group G. Again, the kernel of homomorphism F is the set of those elements of the first group H whose images under the mapping F or under the homomorphism F are all equal to the identity element E of the second group G. For our example on the homomorphism from the set of integers to the set G earlier where G is the set consisting of elements negative 1 and 1, we find the kernel of this homomorphism.
we have shown earlier that the mapping from set of integers C to the set G or group G where G is the non-empty set negative 1 and positive 1 And the uh, mapping f is defined as follows, the value of the function f at x, where x is an element of the set of integers c, is equal to, net, is equal to positive 1 if x is an even integer. If the element x of the set of integers is an odd integer, the value of the function f at x is equal to negative 1. And we have shown earlier with four cases that this is a homomorphism. Now we find the kernel of this homomorphism f denoted by care f and by definition of the kernel of homomorphism, the kernel of this homomorphism f is the set of all elements x the set of all elements x, elements of the set of integers. In the definition, it's the set of elements x, elements of the first group h. And our, in this example, the first group h is the set of integers such that the, the value of the function f at x is equal to the identity element e. And the identity element for the second group is E is the identity element of the second group. G in the given homomorphism. In our example, the second group G under the operation multiplication consists of negative 1 and positive 1. And the identity element for this group is positive 1 under multiplication. And uh, the function value of x is 1. The function value, the value of the function f at x is 1 if x is even. This means that all even numbers, only if x is an even number, has a function value of 1, which is the identity element of group G. Therefore, the kernel of this homomorphism from the set of integers C to group G is the set of even integers because for any even integer the value of the function f at an even integer is equal to 1 which is the identity element of the second group g Thus, the kernel of the homomorphism f from the set of integers to group G is the set of integers x such that x is even. We now take more examples of homomorphisms. Another example of homomorphism is the mapping from the set of polynomials with real coefficients to itself. The set of polynomials with real coefficients under the function defined by derivative.
the mapping or the function f from p sub r to itself p sub r, where p sub r is the set of polynomial functions with real coefficients, that means the coefficients of the terms of the polynomial function are real numbers. So p sub r is the set of polynomials with real coefficients, and the function f is defined by this, the value of the x element of p sub r, so x here is a polynomial expression or polynomial function with real coefficients, and the value of the function or mapping f under x is equal to the derivative of the polynomial function x element of the set of polynomials with real coefficient. Now we check that this mapping f from the set of polynomials with real coefficients to itself is a homomorphism. Again, we verify the property of homomorphism in the definition of homomorphism. And here, the operation involved is addition of polynomials. show that the mapping f from the set of polynomials with real coefficients to itself is a homomorphism, we must show that for every x, y element of p sub r, so x and y here are elements of the set of polynomials with real coefficients, that means that x and y are polynomials with real coefficients. We must show that if f is a homomorphism, f of x plus y, we use addition because the operation involved in this group of polynomials with real coefficients is addition of polynomials. We, show, we must show that f of x plus y is equal to derivative of x plus derivative of y. More generally, we must show that f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y. And again, we start from the, from the left-hand side of this equation. And the mapping f under the polynomial x is defined the value of the mapping f at the given polynomial x is equal to the derivative of the polynomial x. Hence, by this definition of the mapping f, the value of the function f at x plus y, this is the sum of the two polynomial functions x and y, is equal to the derivative of the sum x plus y. And one of the properties of derivatives is, is states that the derivative of a sum is equal to the sum of the derivatives. And applying that property of derivative, the derivative of x plus y is equal to derivative of x plus derivative of y. That, may, that is the derivative of a sum of x plus y is equal to the sum of the derivative of x and the derivative of y. But x prime, in the derivative of x, is the value of the function f at the polynomial x. Plus y prime, the derivative of y, is the value of the function f at the polynomial y.
Hence, we have shown that the mapping f from the set of polynomials with real coefficients to itself is a homomorphism. Because under the operation addition of polynomials, we have shown that f of x plus y is equal to f of x plus f of y for every x, y elements of the set of polynomials with real coefficients. That means x is a polynomial with real coefficient and y is also a polynomial with real coefficient. Now we find the kernel of this homomorphism f and it is defined as the set of polynomials and that gives the function value of f under the polynomial equal to the identity element of the set of polynomials with real coefficients. And the group of polynomials with real coefficient under addition of polynomials has an identity equal to the zero polynomial. We consider zero as a polynomial because it can be written as a polynomial with many terms, but each term has a coefficient of zero. The real number zero can be considered as a polynomial because it can be written as a algebraic expression with many terms. Here we n plus one terms. But when you simplify this expression, it simplifies only to the constant zero or the real number zero. But in this set of polynomials with real coefficients, this is known as the zero polynomial. And actually, any constant can be written as a polynomial, like 1 can be written as 0 plus 1 can be written as 1 plus 0x plus 0x squared plus 0x cubed plus up to plus 0x to the n. The same with 2. 2 can be written as a polynomial as 2 equals 2 plus 0x plus 0x squared plus 0x cubed, plus up to plus 0x to the n. So these constants are known as constant polynomials. And for the group of polynomials with real coefficient under addition of polynomial, the identity element is the zero polynomial. And we want to find the kernel of this homomorphism from the set of polynomials with real coefficients to itself. And it is given as a set as follows. The kernel of the homomorphism from PR to PR is the kernel of the homomorphism F, denoted by Kerr F. And it is defined as the set of all polynomials, elements of the set of polynomials with real coefficients, such that the value of the function F, defined by this, at uh, each polynomial element of P sub R is equal to the identity element E of the set of polynomials of with real coefficients. And that identity element, as I said earlier, is the zero polynomial. Because if you add zero to any polynomial, the sum is, the result is the polynomial. And uh, this tells us that the elements of the kernel of F are those polynomial functions whose derivative because the value of the function f at each polynomial is equal to the derivative of the function x. And we want those functions whose derivative is equal to zero function. And the only 
the only elements of the set of polynomials with real coefficient with derivatives of zero are the constants or the constant polynomials. Therefore, the kernel of f is equal to the set of constant polynomials. Again, the kernel of the homomorphism from the set of polynomials with real coefficients to itself is the set of all polynomial functions. Elements of P are, and these uh, polynomial functions are the zero polynomials or the constants because the derivatives of the constant is zero, which is equal to the identity element of the set of polynomials with real coefficient. We now take more examples of homomorphisms. In the past lesson, we know that Z is the set of integers and Z sub n, the set of integers from 0 up to n minus 1, are groups. Z is a group, the set of integers is a group under addition under the binary operation addition while the set of integers z sub n consisting of integers from 0 to n minus 1 is also a group under the binary operation modulo n. And uh, mapping from set z to set z sub n is another example of homomorphism and we call this particular example of homomorphism as natural homomorphism. We will now show that the mapping from the set of integers to the set of C sub n, the integers from 0 up to n minus 1, is a homomorphism. And this particular example of homomorphism is called natural homomorphism, where the first group C is the set of integers under the operation addition, while the second group C sub n is consists of the non-empty set C sub n with elements from 0 to n minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to n minus 1, under the binary operation modulo n. And this mapping f defined by this f of m is equal to the remainder when m is divided by n. It is the remainder when we apply the operation modulo n. For every m element of the set of integers c.
in general, we must show that if uh, this mapping, this natural homomorphism is really a homomorphism, we must verify that this equation is true, f of a plus b is equal to f of a plus f of b for every a, b element of c. The sum at the right hand side is performed using addition modulo n. I will take a particular example before we generalize the result to, to this. This is a particular example of a specific example of natural homomorphism, the mapping from the set of integers to the set C sub 3, where C sub 3 consists of elements 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, up to n minus 1, n is 3, n minus 1 is 2. And the operation involved in this set is the addition modulo 3. And this mapping is an example of particular example of natural homomorphism. For this uh, particular example of homomorphism, we prove that this is actually a homomorphism. We must show that for every element, integers a, b, elements of c, f of a plus b, we use addition here because the operation in c, group c, is addition. Is equal to f of a plus f of b, where addition here is the addition modulo n, the operation involved in c sub 3. And again, we start from the, from the, the left hand side and I will take particular values of A and B they are any two elements of C Then f of a plus b is equal to f of 5 plus 7 where we take a equals 5 and we take b equals 7. And the value of this function f at 5 plus 7 is equal to the remainder when the sum is divided is divided by n when we perform addition modulo n. And 5 plus 7 is equal to 12. And when 12 is divided by 3, the remainder is 0. And this is the value of the left-hand side of this equation, the property of homomorphism. Now we verify the right hand side. The right hand side of f of a plus f of b is equal to f of 5 because a, we take a equals 5 plus f of b is equal to f of 7 because we take b equals 7. And by definition of the mapping f, 
f of 5 is the remainder when 5 is divided by 3. When you perform addition modulo n. When 5 is divided by 3, the remainder is 2. And 5 and 7, f of 7, by definition of function f, is the remainder when 7 is divided by 2. And when 7 is divided by 2, the remainder is 1. And the sum of 2 plus 1 under modulo n, in our example, under modulo 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, when 3 is divided by 3, the remainder is 0. Thus, we have shown that f of a plus b is equal to f of a plus f of b. Because f of a plus b for the particular values of a and b equal to 5 and 7 respectively is equal to 0. And the sum f of a plus f of b is also equal to 0 when we add f of 5 which is 2 and f of 7, which is 1, we add 2 and 1 under modulo 3. The remainder, the answer is also 0. Thus, this property of in the definition of homomorphism is satisfied. And we conclude that this mapping from the set of integers to the set C3 with element 0, 1, 2 and operation addition modulo 3 is a homomorphism. In particular, we say... This is an example of natural homomorphism. In general, the set, the mapping from the set of integers with operation uh, addition and to the set C and with n with elements 0, 1, 2 up to n minus 1 under addition module n is a natural homomorphism. But in this property, at the left-hand side, addition here is the ordinary addition of integers. And the operation addition at the right-hand side is the addition modulo n. For your practice, please try the following exercises. In each of the following exercises, you must verify if the given mapping is a homomorphism or not. And just remember to verify the property expressed as an equation that must be satisfied by the function f for the function f or the mapping f to be a homomorphism. In number one, the function f maps the set of integers to itself. And the function f is defined by f of x equals 7 for every x element of c. That is, the function f or mapping f is a constant function. That means for any integer x element of c, the value of the function is 7, a constant. And the operation involved in the set of integers is addition. So to check if number 1 is a homomorphism, you must verify if f of a plus b is equal to f of a plus f of b. And we use addition because the operation in this group of integers is addition. For number two, you verify if the mapping from h to g, where h is the group consisting of the real numbers, the set of real numbers under addition, and g is the group consisting of the positive, the non-zero real numbers, R plus is the set of non-zero real numbers, and the binary operation is multiplication, and the function f is defined as f of x equals e to the x for every x element of the set of real numbers. H here is the set of real numbers, a group consisting of the set of real numbers under addition. G here is the group consisting of the non-zero real numbers 
the non-zero positive real numbers denoted by R plus. R plus here is the set of non-zero real numbers. And the function, the mapping f from h to g is defined by this f of x is equal to e to the x. We call this the exponential function. That is, for every real number, the value of the function f is equal to e to the x. And we call this exponential function. And you must show that this is a... You must determine if number 2 is a homomorphism. And to do that, you must verify if f of a plus b... We use f addition for f of a plus b because the operation in H is addition. And you must show that if they say homomorphism, f of a plus b must be equal to f of a multiplied by f of b. And we use multiplication because the operation in the second group G is multiplication. And G consists of the non-empty set the set of non-zero positive real numbers. And that completes our lesson for today on homomorphism. If you have questions about the lesson today, please ask your question in the comments below. Thank you for joining me in my class today in Abstract Algebra.